In addition to managing processes, supply chain managers are often called upon to supervise or facilitate the completion of various projects. In many respects, process and project management are companion practices. Every project involves managing a process, and most processes could be managed as a project using project management tools. Successfully completing a project requires a good understanding of the interdependencies among the various required activities as well as awareness of the time and resources necessary to complete these activities. Three of the best-known project management tools are the critical path method, Gantt charts, and the program evaluation review technique. In this supplement, we introduce CPM and Gantt charts. CPM was developed by DuPont and Remington Rand in the late 1950s. One key concept of CPM is that projects can be broken down into various activities that each requires a certain amount of time to complete. And these activities must be accomplished in a specific order. This figure here shows the nine steps that CPM typically follows. In step one, all the required activities in the project are listed. More importantly, the interdependencies among these activities are identified by determining the immediate predecessors of each activity. Throughout the rest of this supplement, we assume that step one is already completed and we'll focus on step two to step seven listed here in this figure. We'll exemplify how CPM works in the following slides. This example shows the information we need in CPM. In this project, nine activities along with their activity time and immediate predecessors have been identified after step one of CPM. For instance, activity G needs three days and follows activities D and E immediately. Next, I will show you how to construct CPM network or precedence diagram, calculate earliest start and finish times, calculate latest start and finish time, determine slack of each activity, and identify critical path. We're going to start with a brand new spreadsheet. First of all, let's select the entire worksheet. Control A. Now we make each column smaller In this Excel worksheet, we are going to use a 3 by 3 matrix to represent one activity. Now let's start with activity A. We are going to highlight 9 cells or 3 by 3 matrix. We would like to add borders to this matrix. Now we have these 3x3 three three matrix ready, and in the middle we are going to type the name of this activity. This is activity A, and we can put all the information 
in the middle of each cell. In the upper middle, we are going to type the activity time. For activity A, it takes five days, so we are going to type five over there. Next is activity B. Since we created activity A already, so we are going to try copy and paste. Select activity A, control C, copy, and then paste activity A to the place where you want to place activity B. In my case, I'm going to place activity B in cell G10. But don't forget, we're going to change the name to activity B. The time activity B requires is two days, so we can change the number from five to two as well. Next, we are going to create activity C, and once again, I'm going to try copy and paste. Control C and Control V. change the name to activity C and activity time is four days. In this project keep in mind both activity A and activity B have no immediate predecessors. What it means is that the project can start with either A or B. So A and B technically follow no one. On the other hand Activity C follows A and A only. So we are going to add an arrow pointing from A to C. To do that in Excel, I'm going to select Insert, looking for Shapes. Better way to do that is to right click Shapes and add to Quick Access Toolbar. I did that already, so you will see on my toolbar there's a button for Shapes. So I simply click shapes, looking for arrow right here. And I'm going to draw an arrow pointing from A to C. It means activity C follows A. Next, I'm going to create activity D. Once again, I'm going to copy and paste. Activity D takes four days as well. Similarly, activity D has the same immediate predecessor which is activity A, so I'm going to create an arrow from A to D. All right. Next is activity E. Once again, we're going to copy and paste. Activity E takes three days. Activity E, keep in mind, follows B and B only. So we are going to add an arrow pointing from B to E. Next is activity F. Let's copy activity E and create activity F right below activity E. F takes seven days and F follows B and B only. All right. Next, it's going to be activity G, but this time G has two immediate predecessors. They are D and E. So we're going to copy any activity and paste it to where you want. Sometimes you can adjust the location of each activity to make your graph look nicer. This is activity G which takes three days. 
and we know that activity G follows activity D and activity E. Next activity is activity H. Once again, we are going to copy and paste. Activity H takes two days. And activity H follows F. Now let's look at the last activity in this project, which is activity I. Let's copy and paste. Activity I takes four days. Activity I has three immediate predecessors. They are C, G, and H. So we are going to add three arrows pointing to activity I. Now we almost finished the uh, CPM network or uh, precedence diagram. Here's the difference between our graph and uh, the one you see in the book. It is a convention in CPM that we have only one start activity and one end activity. So for convenience, we typically create a fake activity called start when we can start our project with more than one activities. In our case, our project can start with activity A or activity B. It means the project has two starting activities. So we are going to create a fake starting point. Control C, copy, Control V, paste. This is start or the fake starting point of the project because it's not a real activity so activity time will be zero and uh, the real activity A follows this fake start point So does activity B. Now we have officially completed this CPM network. Next, we are going to introduce how to calculate earliest start and earliest finish times for each activity. Earliest start and finish times are at the top of each activity box. The upper left corner is earliest start time. The upper right corner is the earliest finish time. For convenience, usually we make the starting time zero. Since the start is not a real activity, activity time is zero, so the earliest finish time of start will be zero plus zero which is zero. Activity A follows start. Start finishes at time zero, so activity A can start from time zero as well. And it takes five days, so activity A finishes at zero plus five, which is five. So Day 5 will be the earliest finish time of activity A. 
And we're going to do the same thing for activity B. Earliest start will be 0, and 0 plus 2 will give us the earliest finish time of activity B, which is also 2. Now let's look at activity C. C follows A, and the earliest finish time of activity A is day 5, so the earliest starting time will be day 5 for activity C. 5 plus 4 is 9, so day 9 is the earliest finish time of activity C. Similarly for activity D, D can start at day 5 at earliest. And D takes also four days to complete, so the earliest finish time of activity D is also day 9. For activity E, it follows activity B, which ends by day 2. So earliest starting time of E will be day 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. So day 5 is the earliest finish time of activity E. For F, earliest starting time is also day 2. 2 plus 7 is 9. So day 9 is the earliest finish time of F. Now let's pay attention to activity G. G is different from all the previous activities because G has two immediate predecessors, D and E. Keep in mind, we can only start working on activity G only if both activity D and E are completed. D will be completed by day 9, E will be done by day 5, so the earliest starting time for G will be day 9. The largest number among the earliest finishing time of activity G's immediate predecessors. 9 plus 3 is 12, which is the earliest finish time of activity G. Next, let's look at activity H. H follows F, so the earliest starting time of H will be day 9. 9 plus 2 is 11, that is the earliest finish time of activity H. Now let's look at the last activity, activity I, in the project. I has three immediate predecessors, C, G, H. Similarly, C is done by day 9, G is completed by day 12, and H will be finished by day 11. So we're going to pick the largest number of the three as the earliest starting time for activity I. Because that's the only way we can make sure that we can actually start working on activity I. 12 plus 4 is 16, which will be the earliest finish time of activity I. Since I is the last activity, so we know the project can be completed by day 16 at the earliest. What we have done so far is called forward pass. In forward pass, we calculate earliest starting times and earliest finish time for all the activities. Now we're going to go backwards to calculate latest starting time and latest finish time for each activity. This is called backward pass. In backward pass, we're going to look at the last activity activity I. In backward pass, it's very important to remember that we want to make sure the project will not be delayed. So the latest finishing time will be day 16 as well. For the last activity, the latest finish time will always be equal to its earliest finish time because we would like to make sure there's no delay in completion of project. Now we're going to go backward to find latest starting time of activity I. 
which will be in lower left corner. For activity I, its latest starting time would be 16 minus 4, which is 12. That means in order to make sure the project will not be delayed, we better make sure activity I will start by day 12. Now we go back one activity to activity H. To make sure project will not be delayed, activity H has better be finished by day 12, which is the latest starting time of activity I. 12 minus 2 is 10, and day 10 will be the latest starting time of activity H. Similarly for activity G, it has to be finished by day 12 at the latest. 12 minus 3, we get 9. It is the latest starting time of activity G. Now let's look at activity F. To make sure the project won't be delayed, we better make sure activity F will be finished by day 10 at the latest, because the latest starting time of H is day 10. 10 minus 7 is 3, so 3 is the latest starting time of activity F. For activity E, we have to make sure it has to be finished by day 9, otherwise activity G will be delayed. 9 minus 3 is 6, so day 6 will be the latest starting time of activity E. The latest finish time of D is the same as activity E, which is day 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. So day 5 is the latest starting time of activity D. Next, let's look at activity C. To make sure the project will be completed in time, we better make sure C will be completed by day 12, which is the latest starting time of activity I. 12 minus 4 is 8, so day 8 is the latest starting time of C. Now let's look at activity B. Activity B is slightly different from other activities because both activity E and F follow activity B. In order to make sure the project won't be delayed, we have to make sure activity B will be completed by day 3 Here's the reason. The latest starting time of F is day 3. Latest starting time of E is day 6. If B were completed by day 6, you can imagine activity F will be delayed, so will the entire project. So to find the latest finish time of activity B, we choose the smallest number among those earliest starting time of following activities. In this case, activity E and activity F. 3 minus 2 is 1, so we can start working on activity B by day 1 at the latest. Similarly for activity A, it has two activities that follow. C and D. We have to start activity C at day 8 at the latest and start working on activity D at day 5 at the latest. So we pick the smallest number between the two which will be day 5. So day 5 will be the latest finish time of activity A. 5 minus 5 will be 0. So the latest starting time of A will be day 0. In the end, let's look at the fake starting point. 
between 0 and 1 so the latest finish time of the fake start will be day 0 day 0 minus 0 will be 0 and it is always true that for a fake activity like start all those numbers will be zeros now we have finished calculating latest starting and finish times for each activity next we are going to calculate slacks for each activity slack is in the middle of bottom row to calculate slack there are two different ways of doing so one way is the latest starting time of this activity minus its earliest starting time 0 minus 0 is 0. The other way is the latest finishing time of this activity minus its earliest finishing time. In this case it's also 0 minus 0 which is 0. You are always going to get the same answer for the slack otherwise something's wrong with your calculation. Now let's look at activity A. The slack of activity A will be 0 minus 0 or 5 minus 5. Either way it's going to be 0. For activity B the slack is 1 minus 0 or 3 minus 2 which is 1. For activity C the slack is A minus 5 or 12 minus 9 which is 3. For activity D the slack is 9 minus 9 or 5 minus 5 which is 0. Slack of activity E is 6 minus 2 or 9 minus 5 which is 4. Slack of activity F is 3 minus 2 or 10 minus 9 which is 1. The slack of G is 9 minus 9 or 12 minus 12 which is 0. Slack of activity H is 10 minus 9 or 12 minus 11 which is 1. The slack of our last activity, activity I is 12 minus 12, 0. Now we find the slacks for all the activities. You probably have noticed already some activities have zero slacks like activity A, activity D, activity G, or activity I. We call those activities with zero slack critical activities. Then let's look at other activities like activity B or C or E or F their slacks are positive. It means this. If we look at activity B, and if B is delayed by one day, then we can still make sure the project will be completed in time. And let's look at activity E. If activity E is delayed by no more than four days, we're still in good shape. The project won't be delayed so those activities are not critical. On the other hand, for activities A, D, G, I, if somehow they are delayed by a day or two, then the completion of the entire project will be delayed. Now let's highlight those critical activities. By doing so, we have identified the critical path. So critical path will be A, D, G, I. The importance of CPM is that after we have identified critical activities and activity path, if somehow the customer wants the project completed earlier, then we will spend more resources on activity A, D, G, 
I, those critical activities in order to shorten the completion time of the entire project. Spending resources on activities like B, E, F, H, C is just waste of resource. A Ken chart is a graphical portrayal of a project's activities over time. There are many different variations of Ken charts, depending on what exactly the project manager is trying to accomplish. We will construct a basic Ken chart based on the previous CPM example later on. Ken chart is typically used to monitor the progress of the various activities. This helps project managers know which activities are behind schedule, which activities are in progress, which activities have been completed, and which activities are about to begin. One of the disadvantages of using Gantt charts is that they do not show the precedence relationships between the various activities. Therefore, Gantt charts should be used with CPM to help overcome this disadvantage. Next, we'll illustrate how to construct Gantt chart in Excel. To construct Gantt chart for the previous example, we're going to start from scratch. Let's look at this empty Excel worksheet and we're going to select the entire worksheet by clicking Control A, once again make each column smaller. In this project we have nine activities so we are going to name those nine activities. I, H, G, F, E, D, C, B, and A. It means in row 2, we are going to monitor the progress of activity I, and in row 12, we are going to monitor the progress of activity D. And in row 20, we are going to mark down day 1, day 2, all the way to day 20. Let's put all the letters and numbers in the middle of each cell. Now we are going to construct the Gantt chart. We are going to start with activity A. Activity A takes five days to complete, so each column represents one day, so we are going to select five columns and make it let's change it to red which means okay activity A is in progress from time 0 to the end of day 5 and activity A has no slack or zero slack now we're done with activity A next let's look at activity B B starts at time 0 and it takes 2 days to complete. So select 2 columns starting from time 0 and make it red. B is different from A because activity B has 1 day slack. So we're going to highlight column D and make it, let's try, okay, blue. So, blue cells in our case represent slack or idle time. Now, when we look at activity B, we know activity B starts at time zero and it will be completed by the end of day two, and B has one day slack. That is, if B is delayed by one day, assuming everything else stays the same, our project will be still completed in time. Next, activity C. Activity C starts 
by the end of day five because activity C follows activity A and C takes four days so we're going to select four columns and make it red. The select of activity C is three days so we're going to select the following three columns and make it blue it means C has a select of three days. Next let's look at activity D. D starts by the end of day five as well and D takes four days. But be careful, activity D has no slack. Next is activity E. Activity E starts at the end of day two because E follows B and E takes three days. The slack of activity E is four days. One, two, three, four. Next, let's look at activity F. Similarly, F starts by the end of day two, but F takes seven days to complete. And the slack of activity F is one day. Next, let's look at activity G. G follows D and E. So the starting time of activity G will be the end of day nine. G takes three days to complete and G has no slack. Next is activity H. Similarly, H starts by the end of day nine and H takes two days. But H does have one day slack. Lastly, let's look at activity I. I starts by the end of day 12 and it takes four days to complete. And I has no slack. And this is a basic and simple version of Gantt chart for our previous CPM example.